Hello, everybody. So, of course, the Hyundai lineup is a very fast evolving place. And we are here with the latest version of the Kona. This is the all new second generation 2024 Hyundai Kona. This, of course, is their sub compact crossover. It's one of their more affordable models, and it's just gotten a big dose of style and technology. So let's go ahead and take a first look. Now, of course, the first place we need to start is with this exterior design. It really doesn't look much like the outgoing generation of the Kona at all. And we're seeing uh, the new design characteristics from the Hyundai brand here with the Kona model. The most distinct element is going to be this right here. We've got this single light bar that's going to go all the way across the front. It's totally separated from the rest of the lighting. Really gives it a unique design characteristic. And this is something that we're actually going to see on a few other of their other models, including that upcoming 2024 Hyundai Sonata. Now, as far as the rest of our lighting, we do have the separated cluster down here. This is going to be an LED unit, at least on some of the models. So we can see that is certainly the case here with our uh, inline version. And I'll just let you back up and take a look at the overall exterior. Now, there's continues to be a lot of different design versions that you can get because you've got three different powertrains that you can get on this model. Um, as you can see, we've got the aggressive front fascia here with the gloss black finish. You've got the dedicated inline branding as well. Now taking a look at our wheels, we have 19 inch contrast alloy wheels. These are very bold. Um, Hyundai really is the brand that makes, honestly, the boldest wheel designs. And I, I love the way these look. They actually remind me of the wheels that we have on our Hyundai Sonata inline. The big thing with the uh, inline version of this, I think, aesthetically is the body color molding. So on the other versions, or at least the standard version of the Kona, you're gonna have this black cladding that comes over the wheel arches. You can actually see that over there on that limited example. Here we're gonna have the full body color and it's gonna go over that, down low, and over in the back as well. Really kind of gives it a more refined and sportier finish than the other trim levels. Now up top here, of course, we've got the gloss black finish on the mirrors, that looks quite nice. We have the blind spot monitoring system, which will probably be standard, although we don't have, of course, the full feature list quite yet. And a lot of distinct body lines that are going on over here at the side. Kind of reminds me of the Hyundai Elantra and how many angles you have here in the side panels. Now, before we get any further, I do want to mention that you can get the inline trim level across all three powertrain configuration. So yeah, you can get an electric inline model. So if you prefer the sportier design or whatnot, you can get that on any powertrain configuration for the all new Kona, which is certainly very nice that Hyundai gives you that option. Now, as far as heading to the rear design, you're going to see some pretty wild stuff going on back here. As we mentioned earlier, Hyundai's pretty wild in their designs, and you're going to see that with this Kona. The Kona has always been kind of a wild look, and that's going to continue for 2024. So up top, this is probably the biggest element that you're going to notice. We have a wing spoiler on top of the already integrated spoiler that all the Konas will have. I assume this is for inline only and it's going to have a nice black painted finish. It's going to be raised a couple inches above the actual spoiler and then we do have an exposure wiper back here. And in terms of the overall rear aesthetic, I really like the way this Kona looks. It's definitely very bold and aggressive, and it has a very similar design to what you see in the front. So you'll notice that we have this LED accent bar going all the way across the entire rear, which of course looks just like that LED light in the front. We have our Hyundai branding, Kona is spelled out across the back. And then let's check out this little chunk over on the side. This little chunk actually functions as your brake light. It is LED. It also functions as your turn signal indicator, which is also LED for this Kona. Now dropping down to the lower diffuser area, we do have a very aggressive one. Mesh trim going through here. We have a very aggressive lower splitter and we're going to have dual exposed exhaust tips here on the right side. I like the chrome finish on that. Uh, it looks very, very aggressive. And even though this is a relatively affordable model in the Hyundai lineup, they aren't going to short you on the safety systems. Now we don't have full feature availability on what trim levels and such that the that will have all these safety systems, but Hyundai is saying that they will have all of them available. So you're going to expect all four of your active ones to at least be offered on this Kona model. But guys, there's some big changes on the inside. So let's go ahead and check out the tech filled cabin. 
All right, let's go ahead and hop inside here. Because even as different as the exterior is, it's really the interior where you're gonna see the biggest changes. Uh, the overall design is just so different from the previous generation. And before we really get into all of that, let's first talk about the seats because we've got a good perspective on these seats. So as you've seen, this is the inline model. So we have you know more aggressive sporty elements. We've got the leatherette trimming on the outside of these seats, but we have a cloth center that's going to help you stay buttoned down we also have pretty aggressive bolsters so even when you're cornering hard you're going to stay put overall very nice looking seat but i'll go ahead and let mason climb inside and we'll look at all the details of the cabin now the kona is one of hyundai's most affordable crossovers but the cabin in here overall has a lot of different elements that help it not to feel cheap Let's start off by looking at some of our materials over here on the door trim. So we do have a padded area for your arm to rest against. It is going to be, uh, have, have a leatherette, excuse me, through the center section. It is going to be hard touch along the top, as you would expect in this price point. And that is also going to be the case uh, on the upper dashboard as well. With the inline model, though, one of the things I really like is seeing the consistent red accents that run through various places in the cabin, like our vent details. The center console here is very different looking. We'll talk about that in just a second, but everything in here does feel nice and solid. Also very open and airy feeling. The way this is lowered down just makes this cabin feel so much larger than it is. Okay, so let's kind of come in to the uh, gauge area. Of course, we are indoors, so I'm not gonna start up the model, but you can really take a good look at the humongous tech upgrades that are on board with this model. So dual 12.3 inch displays with the new Kona and it's all kind of this one piece. It looks very premium for a vehicle in this segment. Um, and of course, just like other Hyundai products, you are gonna be able to go into the gauges, customize the design and things like that. Now let's pull back though and look at this steering wheel. Really different than anything I've seen in any current Hyundai product. It's basically a brand new design for them. They don't even have the Hyundai branding in the center. This actually is kind of like in the Ionic models where you have the four dots. That's Morse code actually for an H. So it's a unique uh, kind of Easter egg inside of this Kona. Steering wheel is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. Not sure if heating will be available or not, but I do like the perforation and the feel in the hand. We've got aluminum pedals down there at the bottom I'm noticing as well. And let's take a look at the storage because I really want to talk about this. Small crossovers oftentimes have very small amounts of space, but this one here really has a ton of space because of the configuration. So when we open this up, we have a small tray, but this is actually our entire console here where you can stick quite a lot of stuff. This is going to be open to this area and you can actually remove this or put this here if you want the separation. One of my favorite features from the Palisade is that you have the versatile cup holders here. So we can have this large storage area, we can stick something large, but if we need the cup holders, we can press that button that's gonna pop them out. And then we have storage plus cup holders. And then finally, we got this nice space up here with a wireless phone charging pad. Now you may be asking, Drew, where's the shifter at? Well, Hyundai's actually moved this to the column. So again, just like the um, electric Ionic products, we now have the column mounted shifter. You just twist up for drive, down for reverse. And of course you will have a backup camera as well. Down here on the console, oh, we actually do have the heated steering wheel. It's just the buttons located down there. We have heated seats and guys, look at this ventilated seats here on the Kona. Uh, you almost never see that in this segment of vehicle. So I'm very impressed to see that option. And up here we do have a dual zone automatic climate control setup. Let's take a look at the display. So right off the bat, you can notice something is different here. We actually have a new version of the Hyundai infotainment software. Um, you know, without really spending any time with it, it definitely seems to be fast. I like the graphics. They're very sleek and modern. It looks a lot more updated than what is on the current crop of Hyundai products. We do have a uh, integrated navigation system on board. And I don't believe we have a wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay quite yet, but hopefully they will be adding that in the future. And it does have the ability for over the air updates. Up top, we got a manual dimming mirror. 
And we do have a sunroof. It actually has a power sunshade, and it looks a little bit larger than the standard size. Now let's see how much space you're gonna get in the rear of the all new Kona. Now we don't have official specs and figures as we mentioned earlier. That being said, the current Kona is about 35 inches of leg room. And as far as compared to that, I think you might have a little bit more space. Uh, Hyundai actually does say that they have increased the rear leg room for this all new Kona model. So I'd say you might be sitting at around 37 inches of leg room. And as you can see, this seat is adjusted uh, for a relatively short person and I'm five foot nine and I have plenty of space. Uh, this seat adjustment is probably sc scooted all the way back and you're gonna have a decent amount of space. So I'd say larger people will fit back here, uh, but if you get super tall, you might not be able to fit back here comfortably. Now, as far as features, no vents here in the middle. We do have two USB ports. They're USB-C variety. Hyundai is also including a nice fold down center armrest with cup holders inside. And I do wanna point out, just look at the materials back here. You know, typically for an affordable vehicle, you don't see small details that have uh, a really big impact. So we have leather up here in the top. We also have the suede material going through here, but check this out. It actually goes on to the middle seat here as well as your center armrest portion. They keep that suede material. Just small details like that, you will notice in this new Hyundai Kona. Now walking up to our tailgate, we do have a manually opening tailgate. A power one is not expected in this segment. And as far as the space is concerned, the previous Kona was rated at 19 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Now this all new one Hyundai has said actually increases the cargo capacity behind the second row to 26 cubic feet. Um, and as a maximum on the previous generation is about 45 cubic feet. So if you add that to the 19, I'd say you might be sitting a little bit over 50 cubic feet with the seats folded down. Um, so you're gonna have a nice space boost for this all new Kona model. Model. And as far as features, nice cargo cover up top. And then we do also have a spare tire integrated underneath of the floor. Now let's go ahead and talk about what's under the hood for this all new 2024 Kona. Now, unfortunately we do not get the hybrid version that some of the overseas Kona models do get, but we still have three different powertrain options. So starting out on your base models, you're gonna have the two liter four cylinder engine, 147 horsepower, that's carryover from the current Kona model and something that we've seen on a lot of other Hyundai models. And then if you go for the limited trim level, that's where you're gonna get the upgrade to the 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder, that's making 190 horsepower. Now, if you go for the base engine, the two liter, that's gonna be paired to a CVT. If you go for the turbo uh, model in the limited, that's gonna have an eight speed automatic transmission. Now the third powertrain option you have is the Kona Electric and this eye searing neon color behind me. Now the Kona Electric is gonna actually be available in two different battery sizes. So you have the standard range model and you have the long range model. Now as far as the facts and figures on that, the standard range model is gonna have a 48.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, 154 horsepower on that. The long range is a 65.4 kilowatt hour battery and you have 215 horsepower. Now, as far as the range figures for the standard range model, it's going to be a little over under 200 at 197. And for your long range model, you're sitting at 260 miles of all electric range. Now, as far as a few other cool things, you do have uh, the vehicle to load charging system so you can charge stuff off of your Kona electric. So you're seeing a few different things come over from those more expensive electric models like the Ionic 5 as well as the Ionic 6. Now, of course, we don't have any fuel economy figures. This is a very early review of this all new 2024 Kona, but we will keep you guys updated with the latest specs and information as it becomes available to us from Hyundai. And hopefully we'll have a full review on this model coming sometime this summer. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. It helps us get invited to auto shows like this where we can show you guys some of the latest cars first. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to us and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive deluxes.